Hello and good morning, students. Today, we're going to learn new chapter, which is chapter 2.1, Energy Flow in Ecosystem. We are from group Kamin. So before we start our lesson, I would like to introduce myself together with my friends. My, uh, I am teacher Irfan. Together with me, there is teacher Praveen. Hi, guys. Also, teacher Senya. Hello. And teacher Priyanka. Hello, students. Okay, before we start our lesson, I would like to highlight the quote here, which is nature is the closest place to heaven on earth. That means uh, all the element of nature is precious things and we as human need to love nature and conserve it. So I hope for all my students upon completion of this topic, all of you will love nature and con conserve it. Okay, so based on this picture, we can see there is a lot of organism, including producer and consumer. So, are uh, you guys already get the idea on what the chapter that we will learn today? What is the name of chapter that we will learn today? So, maybe it's quite hard, but no worries. I will make it easier. So, we will watch a short video on what uh, the topic that we will learn today. Okay? So, let's watch this video. Right. So based on the video, we can see a lot of organism there, including source of foods and source of water. So did all of you already get the idea what that we will learn today? Mm, maybe teacher. Me too, teacher. Just a little bit. It's okay. Okay. To make it easier, let's play a game, which is hangman to guess, to guess today's lesson. Are you guys excited? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, here we go. So, uh, in this slide, there are nine blank spaces there representing nine hidden alphabet, which will make up a word. So, I want each of you to guess one alphabet. Before that, I will give a clue. So, the clue is there is two E there. Okay. If you guess the uh, alphabet wrongly, your body will be hung there part by part. So start with head and then body, then your hand and also your leg. So if you try to guess the entire word, but you guess it wrongly, all your body will uh, automatically hung there. So not part by part, okay? And if all uh, your part of body is hung there, you will be punished. Ah, so let's uh, start with Pravin. So Pravin, can you start by guessing uh, any alphabet? Yes, teacher. I think I want to guess A. Okay, you guess an A. So let me see, is there any A there? Oh no, Pravin, there's no A there. <laughs> so your, your head already hung there. So Priyanka, do you want to help? Maybe you can guess two alphabet? Sure, teacher. My guess is alphabet C and M. So you guess for C and M. So let me see. Is there any C and M there? Yay, there's a C there. And also M. Well, very good. Good try, Priyanka. So, um, Pravin, I think I want to give you a chance. So can you guess the entire word uh, and save your friends from being punished? Sure, teacher. I think the word is ecosystem. Okay, so you guess an ecosystem. Let me see is the topic that we will learn today is ecosystem. Bull's eye. So today we, we will learn about ecosystem.
right so today we're gonna learn new chapter with this chapter two ecosystem but we only will focusing on topic 2.1 which is energy flow in ecosystem so this is the learning standard uh at the end of the lesson, students should be able to explain with example, producer, consumer, and decomposer, and also interpret food chain and food web. So before we proceed, okay, this is our learning standard for my part and teacher Senya. So before, before we proceed, let us see this simple cycle of organism in an ecosystem. So uh, then after that, we will see what is the meaning of producer, consumer, and decomposer. So, do you know that the source of uh, energy in the ecosystem is originated from the sun? And then the green plant, which is producer, convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy, which is glucose through the process of photosynthesis, right? Then the chemical energy, which is glucose, is transferred to the primary consumer and then to the secondary consumer. And the last one is the tertiary consumer so let's say all this organism is dead including both plant and animals then no organism will consume them right so what organism that will take place and play role to break the dead organism into smaller molecule so when plants and animals die they become food for decomposer like bacteria fungi and earthworms so this decomposer will play a role to break down that animal into smaller materials or nutrients. So we can see here there's worm eating an apple and also another worm. So worm actually are part of a special group species that eat dead or decaying organic matter. So it is very important in our food chain because they will recycle the energy and help us to start all over again. All right. Let we see next the meaning of producer, consumer, and decomposer. So for the first part, we will see the meaning of producer. So, uh, Senya, can I uh, ask you, what do you think uh, about the meaning of producer? Uh, teacher, I think producer means an organism that produces its own food through Photosynthesis. Very good. So producer is an organism that produces its own food through photosynthesis. So most plants are producer. I highlight there that most plants are producer because not all plants are producer. So why? Because there are certain plants that play both role, which is producer and consumer. As example, Peacher plant or in Malay we call as periokara and also a Venus fly trap are example of plant which is both producer and consumer. Or the other term that we said for this both plant is carnivorous plant. Usually a Venus fly trap it only small insect like flies and ant. Same goes to pitcher plant. So we can see uh, the video there. There's a video of pitcher plant trapping a small mammal which is rat. So pitcher plant uh, did not uh, consume only insect, but also small mammal like rat. Hmm, so pity that rat there. Okay, so this is enough to say that this plant is carnivorous and play a role for both producer and consumer. So are you guys clear about the meaning and example of producer? Yes, teacher. Yes, very teacher. Clear. Okay, next we will see the meaning of consumer. I will pass to teacher Senya for the next lesson. Okay, hello guys. I will continue with the meaning and example of consumer. So, a consumer is an organism that eats another organism. So, as long as the organism eats another organism, then it is a consumer. So, under consumer, we have three levels, which is primary consumer, the second one is secondary consumer, and the third one is tertiary consumer. And then under secondary consumer, we have primary carnivore, and under tertiary consumer, we have secondary carnivore. First, let us see the meaning of primary consumer. Primary consumer are herbivores that it produces. That means 
primary consumer are plant eaters. So, example of primary consumer is caterpillar, grasshopper, and I would like another person to give me an example of primary consumer. Can I ask Pravin to give me one example? Yes, teacher. I want to guess a ladybug, teacher. Okay, nice. Ladybug is also a primary consumer. So, what I can say here, primary consumer only eat plants and do not eat other organisms except plant. Okay, let us move on to the next one, which is a secondary consumer. So, for secondary consumer, it is omnivores and carnivores that eats the primary consumer. That means, for secondary consumer, it can either be omnivores or carnivores and eat primary consumer together with producers. Can, as you can see on the slide, this is one of the examples of secondary consumer. So, the Himalayan blue tail, or uh, for its scientific name, Tarsiga rufilatus, is an omnivore because it eats caterpillar and fruits. Okay, the next organism. However, this one, the kingfisher, Alcidoatis, is a primary carnivore because it eats primary consumer such as snails, fish, tadpoles, and shrimp. So, Priyanka, I want you to guess another organism which is a secondary consumer. Can you give it a try? Sure, teacher. A cat? Okay, very good. Cat is also an, an example of secondary consumer, as cat is both omnivore and also a primary carnivore. So, let us, uh, now we proceed with tertiary consumer. So, what is the meaning and examples of tertiary consumer? A tertiary consumer is a secondary carnivore that eats a secondary consumer. The size of tertiary consumer is usually bigger than a primary or secondary consumer. So, example of tertiary consumer is a tiger and a snake. So, why is it called a secondary carnivore? We will see this on the next slide. Have you noticed, based on previous slides, I had introduced terms primary and secondary carnivore. We already learned about consumers. Consumers which are primary carnivore and secondary carnivore. So what is the meaning of primary carnivore and secondary carnivore? So the meaning of primary carnivore is a carnivore that will only eat herbivores. While the meaning of secondary carnivore is a carnivore that only eat meat or other animals such as herbivore, omnivore, and carnivore. Are you guys okay so far? Okay, teacher. Okay, All right. teacher. All right. If you guys are okay, then we will move on to the next part, which is a decomposer. So I will pass this part to teacher Ifan again. Okay, student. Next, we will move to decomposers. So let's say any organism is dead and none of the organism want to eat the dead animal. Let's say uh, a rabbit is dead and rotten. So wolf doesn't want to eat that rabbit because that rabbit is so smelly. So who will play role to break down the rabbit into smaller molecules? So uh, decomposers will take place in this case. So the decomposer will consume or eat or break down the dead plants or animal and decompose them into simpler forms of matter. So we can see there, fungi and fungi and bacteria are the examples of decomposer. Then beside that, we can see two phenomena of decomposing dead organism. We can see that there's mice decomposing and broke down into smaller molecules. Same goes to the pineapple. So what, you can make, what that I can say and I can explain, as long as the organism is organic molecule, decomposer can decompose them into smaller molecule. All right, are you guys clear about decomposer? 
Yes, teacher. Yes, yes teacher. teacher. All right, great. So next, let's we recap based on the first slide that I've shown to all of you. So, Priyanka, which organism do you think is a producer and primary consumer? I think the producer is the tree teacher, while the primary consumers are caterpillar, cola, and giraffe. Very good. So next, I want to ask Pravin, which one do you think is the secondary consumer? Teacher, I think it's the kingfisher. Correct. Well done. And the last one, uh, Senya, which of the organisms do you think is the tertiary consumer and why? Teacher, I think the tertiary consumer is the lion and the snake because both of them are meat eaters. Well done, students. Give round of applause. All of you uh, have answered it correctly. I hope we uh, already achieved our learning standard since all of you can explain uh, with examples the producer and the consumer and also the decomposer. So next, uh, we will try to answer this hot question. I will pass back to teacher Senya to guide you for this hot question. All right, everyone, we will continue with hot question. So let us try this question. So the first question is, are human beings primary, secondary, or tertiary consumers? Explain. So for this question, um, Pravin, can you try to answer this question? Yes, teacher. I think humans are secondary consumer because humans, they consume plants and animals. Okay, good try, Pravin. Uh, you said that human is a secondary consumer. Let us see the answer. Ha, huh, your answer is nearly correct. But actually, human can be either primary, secondary, or tertiary consumer. Human can be primary consumer if they are vegetarian. We know that vegan only eat plants and not eat animals. But most of humans are secondary consumer as they consume both plants and animals. However, human can also be considered as tertiary consumer as we also consume large fishes, which is a tertiary consumer of marine ecosystem. As we know, the large fishes in the marine ecosystem, such as tuna and salmon, they eat small fishes which is secondary consumer in marine ecosystem that eat small primary consumer like zooplankton. Since we eat the tertiary consumer of marine ecosystem, we are also considered as tertiary consumer. So I hope you are clear about this explanation, yeah? Okay, let's proceed to the next question. What are the materials that cannot be broken by a decomposer? So for this question, I would like Priyanka to answer this question. Teacher, I think non-biodegradable substances and inorganic molecules such as glass and metals cannot be broken down by a decomposer. All right. Good job, Priyanka. Your answer is correct. So decomposer cannot break down non-biodegradable substances and in organic molecules such as glass, plastic bottle, metal, and non-biodegradable plastic bag. As long as it is organic matter, the composer can play a role to break them down into simpler materials and nutrients. Okay, that's all for our hot question. Next, uh, next activity is the traffic light reflection. So I will pass this to our teacher Ifan again. So, hi, student, teacher, fun again. So, uh, for our last activity for uh, our part for today's lesson, which is traffic light reflection. So, students, you can scan this QR code to access to the Google Jamboard for our today's re uh, lesson's reflection. So, here's the instruction. There's three options of uh, colorful sticky notes there, which you, you can choose green, yellow, or red. So you can use green if you understand the lesson since you already have prior knowledge. You can use yellow if you learn new things and you understand well about it. 
However, you can also use red if you have difficulties to learn new things in this chapter. So feel free to give uh, feedback for today's lesson too. So I give all of you about two minutes to complete this activity. All right, student, two minutes is over. So let me see your feedback. All right, what I can see here, uh, all of you uh, can understand well for today's lesson. So I am so happy and I hope all of you can use the knowledge for uh, your daily life. Okay, and uh, so this is the end of part 2.1.1. So for the part of 2.1.2, 2 I will pass to teacher Pravin and teacher Priyanka. Good morning, students. How are y'all doing today? Fine, teacher. I'm teacher. good, teacher. Great to hear that. I'm teacher Priyanka, and today I'm going to continue chapter two, ecosystem. We are going to learn about 2.1.2, interpret food chain and food web. I think some of you might have heard of food chain and food web. So, Senya, can you tell me what do you understand about food chain and food web? Teacher, I think food chain is about uh, the link uh, where animals depend on each other for energy source and food web consists of many food chain. Yes, that's right, Tanya. So today, on today's lesson, we are going to see on how food chain is constructed and how we can construct a food web with the help of food chain. So firstly, what is food chain? Food chain is a series of organisms, each dependent on the next as a source of food. Food chain is a linear sequence where it will start from the producer and it will go until a predator prey on a consumer. So as, a, as teacher Irfan has mentioned earlier, producers are green plants. And in food chain, we can't construct a food chain without a producer. This is because producers contains the energy needed by the consumers. If in this food chain, we can see is few arrows connecting the consumers and producers. This is because these arrows indicate the flow of energy from producers to the predators. The grass will obtain energy from the sunlight. So this energy will be transferred to the red when the rat consume the grass and it will be followed to the snake when the snake consumes the rat and finally the eagle will have the energy when it consumes the snake a main point that you all have to remember is the direction of the arrow the arrow here are pointing towards the right this is because the energy is being transferred from the grass to the consumer we shouldn't do it in other way around because energy is not being obtained but it is being transferred to the consumer so keep that in mind and the other most important thing is without a producer a food chain is incomplete you can't connect a, pro a food chain without a producer so please do remember that arrows in the food chain and producers are important to construct a complete food chain can you all get that? Yes, teacher. teacher. Yes, that's right. This is easy, but now we are going to get into something more complex, which is called food web. What is food web? Food web is the interconnection of a few food chains. Earlier, we saw just a linear sequence of food chain, which only consists of one producer, one primary consumer, one secondary consumer, and one tertiary consumer. But when it comes to food web, several food chains will be combined together to form a big food web. This also form a balanced ecosystem. For an example now, from the three, in this diagram, we can see there are three primary consumers, which are goat, rabbit and mouse we are going to look at the goat now now when the goat eats the tree it consumes the energy from the tree 
and after the goat there are jackal and also lion both these consumers can eat the goat and once the jackal eat the goat the jackal will be eaten by lion it's either from tree to goat and then followed by jackal and finally the lion will consume the jackal or else the food chain can be completed in short whereas it will be starting from the tree goat and finally to the lion can you see here that two food chains are combined to form a food web yes teacher, yes, teacher. Yes. now observe the food web and i want if fun to tell me a food chain that you can see in this food web. Okay, uh, green plant is eaten by mouse, and then mouse is eaten by snake, and snake is eaten by kai. Yes, that's right. I hope all of you could understand what is food chain and food web. So now it's time for story. Please listen to the story carefully and after this I'm going to call someone randomly to answer my questions. In a farm, Mr. Gerald lived while organizing a paddy field. Mr. Gerald is not happy with the outcome of paddies as it is always being destroyed by rats. Yummy yummy paddy, tummy tummy have paddy. Mr. Gerald's wife released snakes to eat the rats. Rat, my dinner, call your friends to be in my tummy. But those snakes scare the farmer, thus the paddies cannot be given as farmers are not willing to harvest. Poor Mr. Gerald, go away human or be my lunch. Mr. Gerald then came out of an idea to use owls as they prey on snakes. Owls eat snakes and do not disturb farmers. Mr. Gerald is satisfied with the outcome. Fear no, Mr. Gerald. I am there to buy by the snakes. I hope all of you enjoyed the short and sweet story. Now it's time for Q&A session. For the first question, Senia is going to answer this. Construct a food chain from the story. I think the food chain from the story is Paddy is eaten by rat, and then rat is eaten by snake, and then snake is eaten by owl. Yes, that's right, Sonia. Well done. Can you tell me where is the arrow pointed towards? Is it to the right or to the left, and why is it so? Uh, the arrow is pointed towards the right because it represents the flow of energy. That's right. Well done, Senya. The second question is, why Mr. and Mrs. Gerald used animals but not any pesticide? Can I have Pravin to answer this question? Yes, teacher. I think it's to save the cost and to save the environment, maybe, teacher? A good try, Pravin. That's also a nice, a very good answer. But the best answer for this is biological pest. Have you ever heard of biological pest? No, teacher. No, teacher. That's fine. Biological pest, or it is also known as biological control, is a method of controlling pests such as insects or other organisms using other organisms. In this way, we wouldn't be harming paddy fields or human beings or other organisms around us which is not harming the crop. In this case, we are using biological pests to reduce the destruction of paddy fields through chemicals like pesticides. When we use pesticides, it might harm the paddy field. So it will bring a huge disadvantage to the farmer, which is why we prefer biological pests. So always keep in mind, the best solution to reduce the population of organisms that fall the paddy field is always biological pests. And finally, the last question. 
What happens if the rats are removed while the snakes and owls are still in the farm? Can you give it a try, Irfan? Sure. So if the rats are removed, the population of paddy will increase, while the population of snakes will de decrease. And after a long time, the population of owl also will decrease. Yes, that's right. The population of snakes and owls will decrease when the rats are removed. This is because they will not have enough source of food for the snakes and owls to survive. They will not die. They will decrease because they might migrate to other countries, other places where they can have their own source of food. So remember when in an exam or in an exercise when they're asking such questions, Never ever tell that the population of consumers will die because they will not die, they will migrate. And then the paddy fields will increase because there are no primary consumers to consume the paddy. Okay, well done students. Do you all have any questions to ask me? No teacher. No teacher. Okay, so I hope we have achieved our learning standard. Now, to make this session more fun and enjoyable, I'll be passing my lesson to Teacher Pravin to conduct a fun game. Thank you for paying attention in my class. All right. Thank you, Teacher Priyanka. Hi, students. How are you guys? So I know you guys have a lot of information in your head. So don't worry. Now it's like more to a brainstorming session and it's going to be a fun activity. So let us go to game time. So don't worry, I will be controlling the game. So let us go and watch the game first. So can you guys see the screen? Irfan, can you see the screen? Teacher, clear. Yes, very good. So this is the game called as food chain game. So it's easy. You guys, I will call out any of you guys and then you guys just give me the answer and I will drag the pictures. So once you have completed the food chain, you guys will see it coming to life. Isn't that exciting? Wow. So yes, teacher. Yes, I'm very excited. Wait. So let's play the game. So Sonia, look at the simple chain. So from what you have learned from teacher Priyanka, what do you think will be in the first box? I think a uh, flower will be in the first box. Let's try. Yes, you are correct. How about the next box? Next one is caterpillar. Very good. And how about the finally we will place a Bird. Bird, yes. Yes, it's correct. Look at how does the food chain occurs. So the caterpillar eats the leaf of the flowers, yum, 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 yum. And then the birds come and yum, 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 yum again. So this is how the food chain occurs, guys. But isn't that too easy? Let us go to the next chain. Let's go for a bigger chain. Irfan, can you try out the, for the first four boxes here? Sure, teacher. So the producer should be a corns. All right. And then followed by mouse. Okay, good. Then snake. Wow. And the last one is hawk. Yes, very good, Irfan. Now let us watch the video. Yes, the mount, a mouse is eating the corn and the snake. Oh my god, it's just gulped it. And the hawk takes it away. So, guys, look at the food chain. How does it work? So it starts producer and ends with the consumer. So let us challenge ourselves for a marine chain, something very different. Priyanka, can you give it a try? The chain will begin with producer, which is the algae. Very good. Followed by small fish. Yes. And then big fish. Good. And finally, it's the dolphin picture. Yes, very good. Let's see how the marine chain works. So it, it's the algae and the small fish eats the, sorry, the big fish is the small fish. And finally, the dolphin takes the big fish away. So let us go to the fourth one. This is a mixed chain where we have aquatic and also land animals. So Sanya, back to you. What do you think will be in the first box? I think the first one is flower. That's a good try. Next. Okay, next one is the insect. Yes, very good. And then the small fish. Yeah. And the big fish. Okay. Lastly is the seagull. That's a good try and very good job, Sonia. Let us see how it works. So the insects eats the flower, the small fish jumps and eat it, and big fish eats the small fish, and the seagulls takes it away. Yum, 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 yum again. So 
Can you guys see the chain, how it works? No matter it's aquatic life or it's a land life, it's still the same. There will be a food chain and food web. Let's go for a final, uh, final uh, round. But in this round, there's a twist. So Irfan, can you guess what will be the first one? Will it be mushroom or the plant? I think it will be the plant. All right, let's see. Yes, that's correct. Next. Ooh, then it should be the grasshopper. Wow, that's amazing, Irfan. Next. After that, the lizard. Very good. Then followed by eagle. So we know finally there is a box left and that should be mushroom. But what really does mushroom do? So if you really pay attention to teacher Irfan and teacher Senya's lesson, you will see it now in the video. Let us watch. So there's a plant, the grasshopper eats the leaves, and then the lizard comes and gulp it over. After that, the eagle saw the lizard and take it away. So once the eagle dies, what will happen? Decomposition happens to give nutrients to the plants. So these are called decomposers. So we are actually uh, going back a, a little bit refreshing of teacher Irfan's lesson plan. All right, good job, guys. So let us continue. So we have done with the fun activity. Now, all of you guys are going to be investigators. So I'll be giving a situation. So let's explore. A group of students are from SMK Taman Indrawasi. So just assume you guys are the group of students. You guys conducted a survey to the forest. So there you guys notice a lot of animals and then you stayed there and then you guys derived a food chain. So many food chains that you guys derived, you jot down to make a complete food web. So you guys have been observing all the lifestyle of animals, what they eat and what animals are there. And then me as a teacher, I will ask you guys, after looking at your food web, I will give the possibility if what happens if there is no animal or what will happen if this happens or what will happen. So there, there will be a possibilities. So you guys will guess and try to get a right answer. So at the same time, I want you guys to explain the flow of the food chain and the food web that you guys got. So discuss the first food chain. Who should I call? Priyanka, can you discuss the first food chain? Sure, teacher. From the, this diagram, what I observe is the grass is absorbing the energy from the sun. And then this energy is being transferred from the grass to the hog. It can be seen from the diagram that is being drawn in this diagram. In this diagram, we can see that the mouse is consuming the grass and the energy is being transferred from the grass to the mouse and followed by the snake and finally it reaches the hog. So the grass is the producer here and the mouse is primary consumer, snake is a secondary consumer and a hog is the tertiary consumer here. Very good, Priyanka. You paid attention for teacher Irfan and teacher Sanya's class and also for our class. So guys, so uh, give a round of applause to Priyanka, by the way. So let us discuss. So we have discussed already. Very good. That's the correct answer. But what if the snakes are abolished? For this session, I will help you. For the next one, I want you guys as investigators to find out what will happen. So if snakes are abolished, I will say the hawk population will decrease and the mouse population increase. The reason why hawk decreases, because there is no source of food. And why mouse increases? Because there is no one to eat the mouse. So that is what will happen if the snakes are abolished. So I have explained. Sonia, what will happen if the mouse are abolished? I think if the mouse are abolished, the population of the grass will increase, while the population of the snake and the hawk will decrease because there is no source of food. Very good. So I reveal you the answer. That is correct. When when the mouse is not no more there, so the grass have no no one to eat it, no one to consume it. So same goes to the uh, snake population. Snake population. They don't have any food to rely on. So let us move on to the food web that you guys have created. Do you guys want to see your food web? It's very nice and it's very good. Oh yeah. Before that, let us see a fun fact. So you guys have been talking about energy flow. So when the energy flow passes through each food chain, each or in the food chain, it actually decreases. So to learn that, stay tuned. All right, so let us discuss the food web. So I'm not going to ask you guys to tell the flow because it will take ages and we have a uh, little much of time. So this is a food web consists of a lot of food chain. We have plants, we have consumers and etc. So what if, Irfan, what if frogs are removed from the ecosystem? 
I think if uh, the frog is removed from the ecosystem, uh, the population of grasshopper will increase, but then uh, the population of owl and snake uh, slowly decrease. Maybe, teacher? Yes, very good. All right. Actually, in your exam, you will say this, this is the correct answer. But I just want to give you guys a hint and explanation. Yes, the grasshopper increases, but there is a but there. I, I caps locked the but. I capitalized but because... Uh, even though the frogs are removed, there are rats who can still eat the grasshopper. So does it just it does increases, but at the same time, there are still predators going to uh, going to eat those, those grasshoppers. So same goes to the snakes and all. Of course, they have a rabbit. If you can see, there is a rabbit and there is a frog. But it doesn't mean that if the frog loses, uh, if the frogs are removed, the rabbits are uh, there is no source of food for the owls and snakes. There are still rabbits for them to be consumed. So do you guys understand this part? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. teacher. All right. So let's go for a final exploration. What happens if both green plants are removed? Tanya, can you answer? I think when both green plants are removed, the ecosystem, the food web will collapse. Very good. Give a round of applause to Sanya. Yes, that is correct. All the ecosystem in this place will be disrupted because there is no green plant. There is no source of producer. Thus, it cannot continue to pass the energy. Thus, there will be no source of food. Everyone will decrease. The population will decrease. And thus, ecosystem will be disrupted. Good job, guys. You can see you guys are like Dora the Explorer. You guys are very good explorer. So good job for exploring this forest with me. So let us go for a conclusion. So I will ask you guys to do a conclusion, but it's okay. Let me just discuss. So from here, you know, food chain and food app is actually very important because we can see how an organism depends on another organism. So you guys see from the game there, without an organism, they don't, they don't have any source of food. And just imagine as you as human don't have any source of food. So you guys will starve. Okay, then uh, we can see that food chain always starts with a producer. It emphasizes that producers are very important and without it, the whole ecosystem will be disrupted. And at the same time, it is helping to maintain the balance of ecosystem. So that's all for the lesson plan of 2.1.2. And that's all for uh, from us. Uh, and thank you for being a part of uh, Chapter 2 Ecosystem with us. But, but, Teacher Irfan, Teacher Senya, Teacher Priyanka, and Teacher Pravin has a surprise for you. So what are the surprises? And that is a homework. So you guys, as you guys can see on the screen, there is a whole book about food web. Screenshot this slide and do it on your exercise book. We will discuss it on the next class. You have another homework too from Teacher Irfan and Teacher Senya. Screenshot it and jot, the, jot down the answers in the exercise book. So guys, if you have any questions, you guys can contact us. So till then, meet you guys next class. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teachers.